So, good morning all you beautiful people because I couldn't come up with a better name for this. I'm calling this Talking Fitness with Kev. Now check out my editing skills. Fitness talk, fitness talking, fitness talking with Kev. Yeah. Well, I guess it's fitness talking with Kev, but you get the point. If you have no idea who I am, which you probably don't, my name is Kevin Morrison and I've been a personal trainer for nearly 20 years. And the reason why I'm doing this will be explained by the list of things that I'm good at in life. Personal training. Yeah, I'm really not good at anything else, but I think I'm pretty good at this. And personally, I found that in recent years, personal training and the fitness industry in general has gone completely off the wagon. Is it on the wagon? I don't know. They've gone off the wagon. Whatever. You get it. They've gone astray, awry. They're all over the freaking place and I hate it. You know why? Because it confuses the hell out of people and that's not good because we got too many things confusing the hell out of people already in life. You know what I'm talking about. And as a consequence, fitness talking with Kev or talking fitness with Kev or whatever the goddamn hell I'm calling it is going to bring some light to some of these issues. First and foremost, we're going after a fellow personal trainer by the name of James Smith. The whole reason I'm making this video is because I saw a video earlier this morning by Mr. James Smith and I didn't like it. Now before I go after this cat, who in this case I think is wrong, I should actually say that I like this guy's content, I think he's smart and funny and blah 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 whatever. Whatever happened to men, you know? Why do we have to pay each other compliments before we insult each other? Can't we just insult each other and let that be it? That's what our grandpas would have done. So James comes out with a video called something like, why running is the worst way to lose fat. And if you've watched this guy's content, you'll know that he's a big proponent of increasing your daily energy expenditure through getting more steps and limiting your caloric intake. And while that's all well and good and I absolutely stand for it, I hate this freaking argument. We have got so deep into the weeds as a society around fitness and health, it is absolutely mind boggling. Like dug ourselves into a ditch that's impossible to get out of. And at the bottom of that ditch is Dr. Mike Isretel telling everybody they need to take their 10,000 steps a day and no matter what, always make sure that you train in the stretch. The stretch is the most important part of the lift, didn't you know? Bro, you talking about stretch mediated hypertrophy? You know it, bro. What the hell ever happened to just working out and filling your plate with mostly whole foods and just like limiting the junk that you consume? You know what happened? People tried to science everything away. Most people in the world started living and working in tall buildings and as a consequence they realized they weren't moving nearly as much and that fresh food is hard to find. And so they started getting fatter. And with an obese and sedentary lifestyle without any natural light, on comes the depression. And when you seemingly have the majority of people who are both obese and depressed, it's natural to want to find a solution. And here's where they go wrong. Because the solution for these people is within the context of living and working in tall buildings. So they say it doesn't really matter where you are, just get up and move more and don't consume nearly as many calories. The problem with this logic is that if you're not an active person outright, and I mean from the beginning of your fucking day, then you're always going to be fighting an uphill battle. If you find yourself in an environment that dissuades you from moving, you can try to mitigate it for as long as you want, but I guarantee you if you don't change the environment, you will always go back to where you were. And I can say that with confidence because I've had hundreds of clients do the exact same thing. And it is only the people who work out in the morning, who run, who lift, who consume most of their calories from whole food sources that stay lean and muscular and never have to consider how much they're moving throughout the course of the day because they're already doing it just by virtue of who they are. So he gets on this tangent of whether or not you should run or you should lift and really if you want to lose weight long term then you got to move a lot. And on its face, he's not wrong. But why are running, lifting, and moving a lot mutually exclusive things? Isn't there a way that we could do all of these things? To live an active lifestyle? To be lean, muscular, and healthy? To not have to count our fucking steps every day? And to those of you who are waiting with bated breath on the answer, the answer is yes. You can do all of those things. But if you're concerned with your steps, you're looking in the wrong direction. Let me give you an example. People seem to be under the impression these days because of these personal trainers online that you need to be eating one gram of protein per pound of body mass. And so everybody repeats it like it's God's word. But is it actually true? No! Studies actually show that there's little difference between 0.7 and one gram of protein per pound of body weight. 
So then why the one gram? Because it comes from bodybuilders. Just like all of our crap comes from bodybuilders. People who want to grow the most muscle are going to consume the most protein all the time. Because that's the game for them. But is building muscle the only reason why we consume protein? Also no. Protein is necessary for the health of your organs, skin, muscles, bones, and hair. It's not just about building muscle mass, that's dumb. And it's the exact same thing with running. Running is an incredible bang for your buck. It increases energy expenditure to help you with fat mobilization. It makes you more aerobically fit, which not only improves your performance in the gym, but actually improves your quality of life. When done correctly over long periods of time, it can help with joint stiffness, which makes you less susceptible to injury. Running faster can not only help with tissue quality, but it can actually help build muscle and make you way more proficient at burning sugar as a fuel source. Running is so unbelievably potent as a fat burner, as a health promoter, and as an athletic developer that I cannot think of one thing that is nearly as good. And for people to say, don't do it and just get your steps in is insane to me. What is happening to the world? You're never gonna be a fit person if you think in this way. You know why Jocko and Jordan Peterson and David Goggins are so friggin' popular? Because they tell you exactly what you need to know. And what you need to know is this. Wake up early, work out, stop eating like a teenager. These people are supposed to be fucking trainers for God's sakes. Like, come on, get your head out of your ass. The world is too heavy, man. And it's not because you have access to calories and it's not just because you don't move as much throughout the course of the day. It's because your principles are all fucked up. Obesity and depression are correlative. They happen when you stop moving. So get off your ass and challenge yourself with movement. Not your daily steps and not taking the stairs every once in a while. I mean you have to change the way you think, which is that a robust, long-term healthy organism only happens when you challenge its current abilities. Get outside, go for a run, lift heavy things, and stop eating like a teenager. You're a grown-ass person. You're better than that. I'll see you in the next one.